Well, another shock has followed that of Egypt being knocked out of the African Cup of Nations and it's all about Senegal, the defending champions. And it has been Sadio Mani and his team that have been ranked the favorites to win this tournament being knocked out at the round of 16. Welcome to the Rokani Media Football. How are you guys? I know you're watching us from I go by the names of Rokan David. Smash the like button, comment and share if you're watching us for the very first time. Endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. It was a shocker down in Ivory Coast and at least however much new to eat that everything could go either way but the faves were Senegal and no one saw this game going penalties because we thought that a team that has been struggling that is Ivory Coast it's going to be hard for them to obviously survive the 90th minute and this showcased itself when a load started to happen in the fourth minute with Habib Diallo putting Senegal ahead and we all thought that oh it's really going to be a hard day for Ivory Coast but until the next 90th minutes then the next 90th minutes Senegal never came out obviously add a second goal onto that and I think they never knew how risky it was because when it goes to penalties, no one has a chance of really survival. It's the highest probability game ever played in the game of football because you never know who is going to miss and who is going to score. And 85 minutes later, Frankie Casey went ahead to score a penalty after a player was really brought down. And after that, they went and played a more 30 minutes that summed up the total minutes played to 120 and then it couldn't be a win for either sides and they had to go in penalties and Senegal ended up by scoring four penalties and Ivory Coast scored all the five penalties and Frank Casey who scored the equalizer in the 86th minute came up and did the needful and scored the winner because if at all <clears throat> Mendy went ahead to save that penalty it would have gone ahead to turn out a draw of 4-4 and would have gone ahead to the best loser in the next penalties that would have gone ahead to be taken. So the game of football went out very, very, very badly for the supporters of Senegal and for a team that won the African Cup of Nations in 2022, going all getting knocked out at the round of 16 shocked the entire world and this is what makes football an exciting activity because shock shocks keep coming in as shocks in i think it was on yesterday was tuesday right yesterday was monday on sunday egypt was taking on drc we knew that drc is a good team but we knew it that egypt had quality you know and when it came to penalties, we knew how good these players are. That's why those, those penalties ended 7-8. So, it is really one of those moments that you'll ever, ever, ever ask, why does it really happen? It reminds me of the World Cup of 20, sort of 2002, France coming in through as world champions, having won the trophy in 1998. They almost had every player that was in the world cup of 1998 and some of those were really doing great in different leagues for example they had trezege a top scorer i think in italy jibru sisi a top scorer in league one then thierry Henry was the top scorer in the premier league they went to japan and korea and they i think they never even scored a goal in the group stages senegal beat them by one goal to nil papa boba do you to score that goal the leo sisi's who is the current manager of Senegal right now, defended and kept a clean sheet. So, they never went out of the group stages, but Senegal went out of the group stages, and after going out of the group stages, they couldn't obviously survive the power, the pressure that Ivory Coast really had to put up. But if you are to analyze the game of football, and you want a lot of people to come in through and really do the job of getting in money, and CAF getting in field stadiums, I think you would want to see Ivory Coast keep itself in the game because yesterday they played in a stadium known as Stead. It's called Stead Charles Conan Bane di Yamasorukro, you know? And it has a capacity of 20,000 people and there is a time when they played in a stadium that really had a capacity of 60,000 people. 
So it shows you the power of this team. But one thing that people never went ahead to obviously keep a lot of attention or keep a lot of detail, attention to detail too is that Ivory Coast had sacked their manager. So this came up with what we call a new manager bounce. You understand? A new manager bounce is what we went ahead to obviously get into the side of Sadio Mani. So, sorry, in the side of Ivory Coast, they had a new manager and these players came charged. The lineup was totally changed. I saw players that have not been getting in minutes that prepares came in through and obviously played. So, it shows you that the new manager went ahead to obviously motivate these players and told them that we can because when it comes to quality, you all admit that even Ivory Coast has the quality to match the quality of to match the quality of Senegal. Let me show you the lineups and how they really looked like for the side of um, for the side of Ivory Coast. And um, I think Senegal has good players, but few play in sounding teams. Let me show you this lineup. Let me show you this lineup of. Let me show you this lineup of Ivory Coast, and you're going to get to know how good they are. Fofana in goal, Sagiorie, you know where he plays for? He plays for He plays for Nottingham Forest. And Dika, AS Roma, Arsenal fans know him very well. They've been wanting to sign him for some long time. Then Sangare is another one that you need to obviously look at. Then there's Nicolas Pepe, there is Frank Kessio. So when you look at those players, the Sebastian Hallers of this world that came on later, the Pepe's, you know where they play for. I think Sebastian Haller plays for Borussia Dortmund, if I'm not mistaken. So it shows you exactly that this player is, sorry, players of uh, Ivory Coast really have the quality to even outmatch the players of Senegal. And I think they just need the organization to obviously do the needful. When you look at Senegal, you know Sadio Mani, right? You know Nicholas Jackson. Sa, you know, I think, but the rest of the players, uh, Pameta Sa, yeah, he plays for Tottenham Hotspur, but for the rest of, I think, Niakite, is does he play for Nottingham Forest, Eduardo Mendy, and Kuli Bali? So the quality almost matched, according to me. So when all these players put in the hard work, obviously the quality had to match, and they couldn't obviously find themselves in a situation of really causing havoc. To eliminating one another in the first 120 minutes played then these were the starts of the game 13 shots by senegal ivory coast had eight four shots on target by senegal and even ivory coast had four 43 percent ball position by senegal 53 percent ball position by ivory coast 434 passes completed by ivory sorry by senegal and Ivory Coast completed 579, 78% passing accuracy by, by Senegal, 83% passing accuracy by Ivory Coast, 25 fouls committed by uh, 25 fouls committed by 25 fouls committed by Senegal. Ivory Coast committed 26, four yellow cards to Senegal, three yellow cards to three yellow cards to um three yellow cards to to ivory coast then zero red cards to both sides and it was really very 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 much uh surprising that this time around we haven't gonna hate to see a red card almost in every game we're gonna hate to see played in the round of 16 we've seen red cards you know two yellow card two offsides to senegal three offsides to Ivory Coast, six corners to um, Senegal and two corners to Ivory Coast. That's how everything really went ahead to happen. And Ivory Coast won it on penalties for two. Nicolas Pepe was one of those that really went ahead to take the penalty, to take the penalty, and he really went ahead to obviously get in. And Frank Kessier taking the winning penalty that really had a lot of pressure onto it. Then we go to Starts coming in from the football talk. For the seventh consecutive edition, the outgoing winner of Chan does not reach 
the quarterfinal. Chan is um, Chan is uh, a tournament that sees players that play in the home leagues, all traditional leagues at home participate. Egypt in 2012 they are not they never even qualified. 2013 Zambia eliminated in group stages. Uh, 2015 Nigeria not qualified. 2017 Ivory Coast eliminated in group stages. 2019 Cameroon eliminated in the group stages of 16. 16. Algeria eliminated in groups and 2023 has been Senegal. They've gone ahead to get eliminated out of the round of 16. So it is really one of those shocking moments that Senegal is going to have to be knocked out. And now I tell you, if Morocco surpasses past South Africa, it's going to really cruise. Trust me, Morocco is going to cruise. One won't like to hear this, but Morocco is going to cruise all the way. And Nigeria looking like there are teams that have gone ahead to obviously get themselves ready. But you have to look at Cape Valde, Diara Congo, but Ivory Coast, the hosts. You know, I think the difference with um, with uh, Morocco and what makes it special is the quality they have. You know, I looked out yesterday in a team of Senegal and I said, do they have a, do, do they have a player? In the structure of Onahi, no, Onahi is a special player. And to me, I believe he's the best central attack midfielder in Africa. Do they have a ZH? No, you know. Um, I think the only special player they really have is Sadio Mani, and he's not all that a player with lots of skills, but he has a lot to offer onto the game. We all know that with energy, resiliency, and decision making, and he scores goals, and he's a player who is really unselfish on the field of play. But for the rest of the players, they're not all that special that you'll see something uh, like them being players that are magicians. But Morocco has lots of magicians. There is one kid called Abdi. Abdi, who plays as a left attacking midfielder. You know, look at Amrabat. You know, Augad. You know, Ashraf Akimi can create the magic. Meaning that the... Um, the knockout of Egypt, the departure of Senegal, is obviously making it a huge concern for the side of Morocco to lift this trophy. And it looks like Morocco might find themselves in a proper position to obviously face teams like Ivory Coast in there for you in the final. Because Ivory Coast being home, knocking out Senegal with how charged they are, trust me, it's gonna take them until the final. It's gonna be hard for them to be knocked out because in the round of 16, um, I think they're waiting for the winner uh, between um, the winner between Mali and Burkina Faso and Morocco versus South Africa. So that's when they're going to get to know who they're going to play out of those. So wait and see how that pans out. But Ivory Coast is not in the way of. Ivory Coast is not in the way of Morocco, meaning that if at all Morocco wins against South Africa, they are going to be playing against Cape Valde. Cape Valde has been really a very hard team to beat, but I know this team of Morocco will go past them because Senegal getting out has been an early communication to the Amrabats that plays. You need to raise up your stockings and don't take any game any easy like that. So, thank you very much for watching through. Tell me your thoughts about Senegal knocked out of AFCON by the the hosts that is Ivory Coast in the comment section below. And what are your predictions? Burkina Faso versus Mali tonight and Morocco versus South Africa. Who is gonna go through? I sign out for now. See you later, and I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Muslims Barak Laufikum. See you later in an hour from now.